Hello guys. Welcome. I can't believe it's Sunday class again. <laughs> Getting my little handy dandy notebook. My notes. I'll turn this off so I have no interruptions. Hello, welcome to Astrology 101 classes with Amityville Apothecary. <laughs> So, I'm Danielle. I'm one of the co-owners, if any of you don't know me. Um, I love astrology. This class is designed to serve as like a real basic foundation of astrology. Um, I have some folks here live in the room with me, so if I look away, I'm not being rude to you folks online, and then I'm not being rude by looking at the camera. So, um, if you can't catch this live, hold on a minute. Samantha, I'm teaching. <laughs> Just let her know. To use her quiet voice. Um, so this is designed to be an introductory basic level uh, astrology class to try to break it down to make it very like easy to understand. So what I've been doing is each week going through a planet or a luminary. So far I did the sun, then the moon, um, then what did Mer I just Mercury. Mercury last week and now I'm doing Venus. Yeah, Venus is the second uh, planet closest to the sun. Or sister planet. Yeah, there you go. So it is um, extraordinarily hot and inhabitable. Um, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, it's in inhospitable. Inhospitable. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, you can't you can't live on it. Hi, hi, Rosa. Um, you can't live on it. It's extraordinarily hot and toxic and volatile. <laughs> connection now it's back so from an astronomy standpoint it's a little fireball that can't be touched but um let's see what did i say <laughs> i'm in my notes second planet from the sun it's 900 degrees plus fahrenheit and it's been called the hot house of hell <laughs> so i mean venus is all about love and money the Marie Antoinette, it's kind of like the Marie Antoinette figure of the planet. <laughs> yeah, you can you can do what you will with that hot house hell of, uh, of Venus. But in, in mythology, um, the Greeks and the Romans definitely associate Venus or um, Aphrodite uh, with love, attraction, profit, harmony, relationships, art, and pleasure. So it's, um, it's the planet of beauty as well as possessions which includes money also. So um, it, it's, um, it represents the parts of your life that are concerned with love and attraction and beauty and possessions as well as the arts. So Venus is all things beauty. Um, it usually has the sign or one sign away from whatever planets in the sun, the sun is in. Venus is usually very close. Um, to that so it is um, it takes four to five weeks to transit between signs for Venus and what it represents for your own self within yourself is your aesthetics and it serves as your love language so if you want to know what's my love language how do I express love and how do I like to receive love then you'll look at Venus as that indicator what it represents in life so if you say that Venus is in a certain sign in life for the collective, uh, the, it reflects the collective's romantic energy as well as their sense of connection to each other. So let's see, what did I say? Okay, I take notes and then I just, it keeps me honest. <laughs> so astrologers associate Venus with love, flirtation, seduction, beauty, art, luxury and pleasure. So these are all things that you seek to acquire. Venus rules your force of attraction, sexual and otherwise. It describes your interactions with others and the way you express your affections as well as your artistic impulses and the way that you deal with money. So it's interesting because the sign for Venus, I like these little signs, that may look very familiar to you. So that has two metaphysical characteristics of it. The first at the base is the cross of the earth. So that's rooted here. But then at the top is the circle of spirit. So those two um, components combined are the symbol of Venus, 
but then it's also more commonly recognized as a symbol representing women, biological women. So um, it's interesting. My my uh, astrology teacher is named Maria De Simone. If you want, she has a wonderful podcast you can look up um, called Insightful Astrology, and she offers classes and like she's excellent. So she um, she relates to Venus being the planet of love and money as saying who doesn't like getting paid or laid so fun a fun way to remember venus is paid or laid <laughs> so <laughs> it represents your romantic tendencies your values and your response to beauty art money and possessions so last week i touched a little bit upon retrograde and what that means for mercury but all planets have periods where it goes retrograde so i thought it was interesting uh, to talk about Venus retrograde because it will be going retrograde at the end of this month. Of course, I wrote down the dates and now I don't see it, but you can look up when it goes retrograde. I think towards the end of July. So every 18 months, it goes retrograde for a period of approximately 40 days. So these periods, when it goes retrograde, it is a powerful time for reflection to review and restructure relationship dynamics. You can often find yourself admitting apologies and offering forgiveness during this time, as well as securing uh, economic stability. So a period of retrograde is a time to review, to renew, to just take a, a look again at certain things, and it's a slower pace. So tie up any loose ends that may exist and say like, okay, well, you know, I'm sorry for things that happened. Let's let's revisit, okay? And then what it means if you were born while Venus was in retrograde. So it doesn't mean that you're doomed and that you can't find love. You can. <laughs> but you may be shy. You may be a little bit more uncertain or hesitant to express affection, especially around your potential partners. If, you, if your natal chart reflects... Um, Venus was in retrograde when you were born. So romance is not, like, it's not a lighthearted um, romp. <laughs> it's, it's, like, much more serious for you. It's a serious reflection. So you may just hold yourself back or be a little bit more timid than most people. So it just means that, like, you like to take things a little bit more slowly in all romantic things. Um, and maybe even money things, which is not a bad thing right so it would be helpful to go through every um, Venus in each sign so you can reflect on your own natal chart and um, and see if it corresponds with how you operate so my Venus is in Leo and it's in the ninth house so last week I talked about mercury and the signs but then I also went into what each house does so I can give like a little overview because as Venus travels throughout the year, throughout each of the astrological houses, it's interesting to see what may come up based on what that house rules. But also as you look at your natal chart, you will be able to say, say like my Venus is in Leo in the ninth house. So understanding what Venus is, uh, the ninth house is in charge of, that is a heightened aspect of importance and how Venus relates to that. So I'll go through it and I think it'll make sense. So the first house is ruled by Aries. So if your Venus is in Aries, um, some properties that may concern you if your Venus is in Aries is uh, things related to the person's own, making the person's own needs count and you may have a tendency to be possessive. So be careful of that because Aries is a fire sign. It's a cardinal fire sign. So it's the fire starter. It's like, you know, um, the first house is all about self. So Venus will be loving issues as it relates to yourself. So Venus and Aries, uh, excitable, enthusiastic, impulsive. You like to think of yourself as a romantic adventurer. You can fall in love very quickly and impetuously and love at first sight, but then you can also fall out of love very quickly as well. 
So you can be more demanding, more demanding than you realize. Um, because again, there's that tendency of maybe like self-centeredness or focus on self. It's just something to be cautious of or aware of Aries when your Venus is in Aries. You are very affectionate. You're ardent. Like you're a very um, strong lover and you can become very easily aroused with romantic gestures. So um, let's see what ultimately gets you going more than a mental connection is a physical attraction if your Venus is in Aries. So it's very like impulsive and like, go, go, act first, think later. So, or if your Venus is in the first house. So the second sign is Venus in Taurus. So if you're, uh, the second house, if your Venus is in Taurus or if your Venus is in the second house, uh, things that may come up for you is um, a deep sensuality and a love of beauty and also a creative talent. So uh, Taurus is uh, one of the signs, Taurus and, and Libra are both ruled by Venus. So it's in its natural house. It's very comfortable there. So Taurus is at home here. It makes you very affectionate and charming and artistic. Um, and very sensual in the extreme. Like everything sensory overload, like you're about it. You love all the comforts of life which appeal to you. So that can be very rich food. It can be very long, luscious sexual encounters. But what, what you like is like the same partner. You like the stability of a, of a solid relationship that's dependable. You like routines. We're talking about Venus. Welcome, flower. Um, we're talking about Venus today and astrology, like what the signs are, because Venus rules love and money. Um, so you, you definitely value consistency. You require security and comfort, and you love cuddling and beautiful objects. You love to have beautiful objects and possessions around you. Um, because you're a... Uh, a fixed, you're welcome. Because you're a fixed earth sign, sometimes you can be a little fixed in your ways or stubborn, so you might need like a little push. But you really love a committed partner and you also like to have a healthy bank account because for the money aspects, it makes you feel safe and secure to have a healthy bank account. You really love having luxuries around you and beautiful things around you. That is very Venusian. Um, so sensuality, love of beauty, and creative talent and art. Okay, so then the next sign and uh, the next house. So as you go through the astrological chart, which looks like this, this is one of the books that I use that we sold here. Um, so it starts here, because it's, it's like a little reverse. So the astrological chart starts here. So Aries, Taurus, Gemini, yeah, I'm upside down, Gemini, Cancer. So it goes around this way. So each house is ruled by a different sign. So as you think about the traits of the sign, you can also think about the traits of the house and things that are important. So the third house is Gemini. So if your Venus is in Gemini, um, some top level ideas are, so Gemini is an air sign, which is all about thought and communication. And, um, and it's mutable. So it's like all different varied interests. So things that may be appealing to you if your Venus is in Gemini is books, ideas, contacts with others, and friendships come very easily, um, sometimes even more than romantic partners. Mm -hmm. Because again, you like a lot of interest in a lot of different things in that category. So um, let's see. All right, the planet of love within the sign of Gemini, which is the inconsistent mind, because again, it's like it likes all the things. Um, it can produce a very witty banter. They tend to be like very smart and sharp and witty and sarcastic and fun. Um, it can it can definitely deliver many happy hours of conversation with groups of people. You love that. And you love different like bookstores, so you can spend hours browsing in a bookstore um, or like an art gallery. And you have lots of lighthearted flirting because you like all different types of personalities and all different people. And you have a great attraction to other people that are smart and witty and quick. 
So what, one thing you have to be cautious of is your affections may be easily swayed and there is a propensity that you may be inclined, more inclined to have a love affair because um, either online or in person because you, you like all different subjects on all different things. So just stay focused and <laughs> be aware of that. Um, potential, listen, it's all about choices, right? Mm -hmm. So once you understand the energy, it's how do you work with the energy, right? Um, so the challenge is to, um, a challenge for a Venus in Gemini is really to, the ability to be able to distinguish between what ought to be a fine romance and what may seem like a fabulous idea at the time versus true love. So they're not always one and the same. So Gemini, you have to use your discernment on those matters, okay? So, hi Ryan Cosgrove. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Astrology 101. Um, glad you're here. So, the next sign is Cancer, which is the fourth house matters. So fourth house is down here at the base of your astrological chart. So, um, that themes are home, family, and like your upbringing and your background because it's your base foundation, so the root of who you are. So if your Venus is in Cancer, you are definitely a natural nester. You find your deepest pleasures being at home with your family. You are very kind, you're sympathetic, you're sentimental because you're ruled by water, which is your emotions. Mm -hmm. So you're sentimental, you're loyal, devoted, oftentimes popular, and you love to be a homemaker and a terrific cook. Even if it's like aspirational to be a good cook, you try. You really would like that. Mm -hmm. So um, all things like home related. So you may always seem to be very self-confident because you like to make people feel comfortable and nurtured. But underneath, you may actually just be a little bit more insecure than you let on. Because again, it's the crab, right? So it's a hard shell and you appear like everything, but inside it's the soft, mushy stuff that you're protecting. So you do sometimes have like a little deep rooted fear of rejection, but then you hide that. So just be careful that you don't hold on too long to lovers and friends that might, it, it may no longer be viable. So don't be so afraid of rejection that if it's no longer healthy, let it go. Um, you don't mean to be clingy, even though sometimes you can be clingy. You just love somebody so much that you're like, oh, I'm just gonna love you and like smother them because <laughs> you don't wanna hold on to them forever. So sometimes it's not healthy, love them up forever. So <laughs> just be careful of that in your relationship dynamics and you're a very loving, kind, compassionate person, um, Venus in, in Cancer, which is emotional. So the next sign is Leo, which is the lion, which is ruled by the fifth house. And things, topics that may come up for you if your Venus is in the fifth house or in the sign of Leo is children, lovers, having lots of fun and loving music. A creative outlet is critical for you. You love all things creative so you know my Leo is in my ninth house so this is ap appropriate for me so if your Venus is in Leo you tend to be very warm and outgoing so it's a fire sign and it's like think about the Sun the Sun and the summer so it's a fixed fire sign warm outgoing very loyal you love luxury you are very creative and self dra uh, self dramatizing and we love to be in love with love. So you definitely feel passionately and very big. You love to express yourself flamboyantly and you think that love is an essential part of your nature. Like you have to have love in your life. And same thing with art and beautiful things around you. You tend to define yourself through having love in your life. Um, you love the arts, you love doing artistic things and going to artistic places and you can find beauty in nature just as much as you can in museums and um, beauty is everywhere, it's just part of how you experience life. Um, so the thing, even though you love um, art, it doesn't mean like you're gonna just run away with like a poet or like an aspiring artist unless they have like a trust fund <laughs> like, because you you definitely 
are aware of realities and you like it when there is money free flowing and at your ready because money brings the luxuries and the experiences that Leo likes in love. So I hope that's helpful. Okay. The next sign is Virgo, Ven Venus in Virgo. So if your Venus is in Virgo, let's remember Virgo is a mutable earth sign. So it's based in like earthly matters and materialistic like things. And their brain is very like analytical and detail oriented. So Venus that rules love and money in Virgo, it's six health matters. Some themes include you love books and very productive work and you're very loyal, but you're not possessive. So if your Venus is in Virgo, when you're in love, you pay very full attention. You analyze everything. You replay conversations, interactions, you reread emails, you listen to voicemails, and you make sure that you didn't miss a thing. You're very astute and detail oriented. So you will do anything for your lover. You like to be of service, but then you can also be a little critical by pointing out your lover's flaws. So don't nitpick and just be careful of the intensity with which you do that because it comes naturally to you. Like you may think it's being constructive, but nobody likes to be picked at. So um, you can be critical and controlling and full of opinions about how other people ought to behave versus how they do behave. And we talked about that a little bit last time with Mercury, but now these are matters of the heart, matters of love, mm -hmm. matters of money. So like Virgos, Venus and Virgo, you may think like, well, this is how it should be, this is how it should be. But like we're humans and we're like very diverse. So not everybody does things that way. So um, another aspect of Venus and Virgo is they tend to be very modest and somewhat inhibited and sometimes shy when it comes to romantic matters and like between the sheets. So, you know, but that's where, that's where the partnership comes and the trust and the loyalty because they're very, very loyal. Um, and they, they like, they like stability and communication in their partner. So I hope that's helpful. Um, the next sign is Libra which is associated with the seventh house, so. Oh, that's right, that's crazy. And my uh, Pisces, uh, the Venus mm -hmm. Pisces, that's in my seventh house for some reason. That's like, it's all broken. What does that say? Well, it's just that, it's just that, um, this is the natural ruler of that house. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if your Venus is in Libra, mm -hmm. or if your Venus resides in the seventh house. But, it's not, but it's not ruled by Libra, because mine is ruled by Pisces. Right, so your sign is Venus and Pisces. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that and mm -hmm. what that means when we get up to number but is 12. It, is it always the seventh house though? That no, Pisces? because you have to see where your Venus, which house your Venus is in. So see if, you're, if your natal chart, find your Venus that looks like the, the woman symbol. Yeah, it's, it's in what house is it in? Which it, it says Pisces, but there's a number seven. So yours is in the seventh house. Yeah. Okay. So, so then. Yeah. So all the, then. All the signs are right. So it's going to take on the personality of Pisces, mm -hmm. which I'll talk about. But it may be related to topics that that's ruled in the seventh house because that's where the planet is yeah, sitting. Yeah, that, that always confuses me. So to, okay, that, that that confuses a lot of people. That, that's confusing. Yeah. So love, luxury, ple pleasure, and beauty, and also um, Libras have a need for justice. Too. So if um, if your Venus is in Libra or if your Venus is in the seventh house, you may identify or those topics may be heightened importance for you, okay? Mm -hmm. But your personality of Venus is going to be Pisces that we'll talk about mm -hmm. when we get up to that. But if your Venus is in Libra, these are some themes that may apply to you, okay? So you're affectionate, gentle, warm, um, and keep in mind, Venus rules Libra. So it's at home in this sign. Um, you're willing to please. So you're a very true romantic. You idealize love. And sometimes when things get hard in a relationship, which every relationship has ebbs and flows and goods and bads, sometimes you have trouble adapting to like the, the rough times because you idealize love so much in the relationship that like you're like, well, why can't we just get along? Um, so... You know, when disappointment does happen, sometimes it sets you back and it takes you a little while longer to, um, to handle it. 
and then you then you handle it and you get moving. So you're very attractive. There's like a a, char a charisma that people are drawn to when people have a Venus in, in Libra. So there's like a natural attraction there. And then usually there's somebody like waiting in the wings, like crushing on you. Um, it's just something about the energy. So it also, um, when your Venus is in Libra, it also brings a strong aesthetic sensibility. So you may have beautiful decor, you may have art, you may dress impeccably, your um, makeup may be on point. So Venus in Libra, it's like all about beauty and love and aesthetics and beautiful things. So um, now a very different sign, the next one is Venus in Scorpio. And also eighth house matters. So if your Venus um, sits within the eighth house, these are some topics that may come up because Venus rules love and money and the eighth house is all about death, rebirth and regeneration and transformation. So um, you may find yourself being very possessive, uh, very passionate and like very deep because it's a, it's a water sign that's fixed water. So it's very deep what lies beneath the surface. Um, money is very vital to this person's individual happiness, uh, this individual's happiness, because um, all things love and money, Venus and Scorpio, it's important for them uh, to feel safe. So Scorpios have an infamy of being very sexy. <laughs> so it does sound like Venus and Scorpio, this is gonna be like ecstasy. And sometimes it definitely can be. Um, you can get aroused in the presence of mystery and intensity, as well as a propensity for like a hint of darkness. So you can handle that. You have a capacity to handle that more than some of the other signs. Um, Venus in Scorpio is very proud and passionate and seductive, and you are prone to a deep longing both sexually and emotionally. You love the emotional connection. And, um, Sometimes your your love life can be a little bit stormy as a result of that. Like it just, you guys go deep and it's intense and powerful. Scorpio is powerful. So um, at your best, you are deeply devoted and you are profoundly intimate because it's once you let down your guard, the connection is like very, very strong. But at your worst, you have to be very, very careful because it can lead to jealousness, possessiveness, and um, vengeful. So you do have the, cap the capability of pulling back from social interactions as well as isolating yourself behind like an invisible shield. So um, if your Venus is in Scorpio, that's one of your traits, like you can just um, almost become invisible while extracting information from other people or like uh, emotions. So remember, when you're dealing with Venus, which is matters of love and money, it's relationships and interaction with others. So um, that requires work on both sides. So Venus in Sagittarius, we're also representing the ninth house. So personal freedom is vital for people with a Venus in Sagittarius. So you can be in a committed relationship, but you still need your space for personal freedom and expression. And truth and ideas are very, are very valued because Sagittarius is all about higher learning. Um, so Venus in the ninth house, Ven uh, Venus in Sagittarius. So it's demonstrative, ardent, very direct and excitable. So you see love as an adventure. Just like if your son's in Sagittarius, you see life as an adventure. Venus in Sagittarius, you see love as an adventure. So you don't see it as a way to nail down a secure future. You're just like, let's go, let's give it a go. We're going for a ride, a love ride. Um, so you value your freedom. Your ideal lover is someone who helps you see more of the world and experience life. Like you just love that. You're like, let's grab a backpack and go. Uh, who cares where we go? Like, let's just jump on a train and go somewhere. <laughs> so you don't want somebody that's gonna be like, let's just stay in tonight. Like that's too restrictive for you and it's not gonna serve you well. Um, you have noble ideas and you are drawn to people who are committed. Like you, 
you're about it, you applaud it, but um, you also are extraordinarily intrigued by people with diverse backgrounds from you because you love to learn from them. Um, and you definitely are bold. You don't mind doing something like outrageous or outlandish or something new because for you it's all like a new experience. So it's an adventurous um, sign to have your Venus in. And it's fun. Okay, so the next sign is, um, is definitely more conservative and it's Capricorn and that corresponds with the 10th house. So matters if your Venus is in, is in Capricorn, you may find um, yourself as uh, ambitious as well as materialistic in that you like tangible things. Like you may be a gift giver. Um, achievement is very valued. And again, Venus, love and money, it's about possessions. So status is important. And the people you surround yourself and their status, like in real world, that all leads to material security in the world. So that is um, valuable for Venus and Capricorn people. So you're very sensual um, in your sexual liaisons. You're constant in your affections. And you're also very cautious about revealing your emotions. You value stability, propriety, and morally correct behavior. You don't like messiness of emotional outbursts and that actually like scares the heck out of you. So you tend to keep your feelings like very controlled and under wraps. Um, you're serious and you're sophisticated and you admire all things classic and in art and with love, you are all about like the need for control and restraint. Um, you're a realist. So like I was saying, like status matters, reality matters. You're very practical, but you can still be like very sumptuous and sensual in that, but it's like grounded in earthly matters. And like, this is real, this is what we can do. This is, you know, and, and being realistic with limitations too. So that is Venus in Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Venus in Aquarius is associated with the 11th house. And the 11th house, um, friendship with influential people. So this is also status and education being very valued. So Aquarius is a, a sign that is associated with like air fixed air but i always say outer space but it's also the 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 largest collective or what's in the best interest of mankind as a whole so like you're a progressive thinker so this is venus in aquarius um you love open-minded friendly um idealistic you're drawn to like mavericks and rebels and you have tons of friends so you love having tons of different diverse friends. Like it's like a menagerie of interesting people. You think that's very interesting. Um, so you're not the most passionate person in terms of like feelings and emotions and romance because you like, um, you like intellectual stimulation. So I remember there was like a meme going around and it was like somebody like kissing a brain. And I remember I was like, oh, that's like a weird. It, and then the, the caption associated with it was sapiosexual. And what that means is like, if you're attracted to my brain and you stimulate me like intellectually, then you'll get my heart. So they're not easily won. Like the, the, um, the Venus and Aquarius, like their hearts are not easily won, but they, um, they're all about intellectual companionship and they love stim stimulating conversation. And, um, let's see, they do require a certain amount of solitude at times. So ideas and causes definitely appeal to you if your Venus is in Aquarius and, um, passionate displays don't really appeal to them. Like they don't, they're like, mm, meep, meep. I like, <laughs> they, don't, <laughs> they don't really respond well to that. So you're a very independent sort. Your heart is captured through the intellectual thought. I think that's the pathway best to a Venus and Aquarius' heart. Okay, so now we're up to Pisces. So Venus and Pisces. So if your Venus is in Pisces, or if your Venus is in the 12th house, some themes that may come up for you of importance are art, 
music, creativity, and all things mystical. Mystical matters and love are all valued. So you are very sentimental. You are a water sign. Um, you are artistic. You're devoted. You are willing to do anything for your beloved. So you love to idealize your lovers. And you truly do seek um, union with them and partnership with them. But what Pisces lack, because it's not the most logical sign, is sometimes they don't know what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. <laughs> so definition, like remember, Pisces is a fish. It's like, woo, just go with the flow. But you have to be careful because sometimes other people can use that to their advantage and your disadvantage and can... Um, you are more vulnerable to other people being abusive toward you because you're more inclined to be like, that's okay, and like take crumbs. And that's, you deserve better than that. So I look at you just because that's your sign, not that you do that. <laughs> but it, um, sometimes I feel that way. Yeah, yeah. So, so the caution with that is when that happens is ultimately it'll pent up and then you'll get angry, and then you can become passive aggressive. <laughs> so it's like a cycle. So just once you understand it, um, can you just peek out and say, we're teaching the class, yeah. I'm just trying to lower the volume. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so just be careful about that because <laughs> I'm proud of you. Thank you for that. Um, so listen, you truly know how to love. That's not the problem. The problem is that sometimes Pisces tends to sacrifice their own needs for others. So you have to have healthy boundaries and just honor like defined boundaries of what is acceptable and what's not acceptable because you can't idealize love and then not have it happen and like you tolerate less than you deserve. So um, again, once you understand the themes and the energies of the impact it has, you can be aware of it and learn how to best navigate the relationships as they work for you. So that's the overview of Venus in each suit. So, yeah, it, yes, I said suit, meaning tarot, but like the sign, yes, the zodiac sign, you're right, this is a class. Yeah, 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 so Leo, my Venus is in Leo. But the ninth house is where my planet of Venus resides. So it has the personality of Leo. That I feel big, I love big, I'm loyal, I'm dramatic, I want to feel loved. But then the ninth house is all about personal freedom being vital and truth and ideas are valued. So I feel so big, but then also I need my personal independence from a lover. Like I need to express myself. So, does that make sense? So it's like... Oh, yeah, that's what Leo's on. Yeah, but then the sign, the ninth house that it's in, the ninth house rules higher learning and exploration and expansion. So Leo has the personality for Venus, but then also the themes with which it's extra important is I can't feel too closed in. I need space to be able to express myself without somebody trying to restrict me. So it's both, like you have to look at the house that it resides in. It applies to all of life, but in particular, that's a, that's a um, an enhanced house of importance as it relates to love and money matters. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So you yeah. said you're... Uh, it's in Pisces. In Pisces, but it's, but it's in but the, the seventh, seventh house. house. Which makes it all kinds of confusing. Right, so your your Pisces, everything I just said about the personality of Pisces, mm -hmm. Venus in the personality of Pisces. Yeah. But the seventh house has nothing to do with like, what Because Pisces is the twelfth house, yeah. not the seventh house. Right, but Pisces, because your planet is in the seventh house, it rules love and luxury and pleasure and beauty and relationships because the seventh house is also um, relationships. Romantic relationships it also relates to justice. That's so why, those, that's, that's yeah. Leave, that's Libra. That's Libra because Libra is in the seventh. Is usually right, but it's a matters of life. Mm -hmm. So any of those matters as they come up in your life, 
that's how, Venus is how you express love and how you like to receive love, as well as your attitudes about how you um, feel about money and receiving money and possessions and art and beauty. So take a look at where your, um, where your houses are and like where your planets are overall. And then, so if you had your Venus in Aquarius mm -hmm. and say it was in the fourth house, well, then it would be all mad. Venus and Leo would have that personality, but it would be very important about like your home and your home life and like your foundation mm -hmm. because that's in the fourth house and that's what the fourth house rules. Yeah. So if it's in the first house, that's all about like your sense of self. So it would still take on that personality, but take a look in the, in the natal chart where it resides and that's when it all starts coming together and that's when you start layering on the different aspects of astrology. Are there any questions online from any of our viewers? I hope that this makes sense. I don't know. Well, it's complicated. That's why it is. Yeah, it is complicated. That's why I try to break it down in simple, um, simple bite-sized ways. So if you can say like, okay, Venus is in charge of love and money, and it's in the person. So I say the zodiac sign is really the personality, how you express yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's in the personality of Aquarius. Then you look at like, okay, throughout all of the different 12 signs, each sign rules a different part of life. So wherever that planet resides, it's like an extra important part of life where that's going to be heightened for you. So, but it's always important because that's just how you express love and, uh, and receive love and feel safest in love. So, um, let's see. For anybody that wants a quick recap, as I have a few minutes, I'm glad that it's that it's helpful for you. Just a quick recap of the 12 houses. I'll go through like some key words for each. So the first six houses, which looking at the sign, this starts with Aries. The first six houses are the lower part of the astrological. These are all the inner houses. So the personal houses. So this is all concerned with your self-image, your values, your daily habits. Then the top ones, 7 through 12, are the interpersonal houses. So that relates to you as it relates to others. Other aspects, partnership, travel, career, communities, okay? So inner and then you, an outer world. So first house is the house of self. So as you're looking at your natal chart, look at where your Venus resides. So the personality will be the, the zodiac sign it's in. But then you look at the house that it's in. So the first house is the house of self. So the house of self-image, our style, how we're perceived by others, um, your outlook on life, what you look like, okay? So those aspects are gonna be very important if the planet is in that house. The second house is all about value and possessions, tangible material things, your creature comforts, how we earn money, um, your resources that you have. So that is, um, the, that's the value and possessions that we have. The third house is all about communication. So the third house, communication is how we express ourselves and how we move through the wor world. So early education, communication, technology, transit, the car you drive, writings, news, it also includes your brothers and sisters and your attitudes towards that person or people. Um, and then what you think and your ability to um, communicate that. So communication, short journeys, and brothers and sisters. So the fourth house matters. What the fourth house rules is your home and your lineage. So home and hearth. It's at the bottom of the natal chart. So it's your foundation. So family, ancestry, traditions, um, planets in the fourth house. If there's any planets in that house, it indicates in heightened energy towards family and ties and your root system. So that's home and all domestic affairs. So, and that also reflects the dominant parent. Oh, I'm sorry. That also reflects the least dominant parent. The 10th house uh, represents the dominant parent, the least dominant parent. Um, and then also, since it's the foundation, it's any hidden depths of yourself, 
are found in that fourth house. Your fifth house is your house, house of pleasure. So that's fun and fertility. So that can be kids, romance, children, creativity. Um, what are you birthing? What are you bringing into the world? Um, Self-expression. What are you creating? So sixth house, house matters are work and your daily routines. So if you have planets in that house, look at what the planet rules and then look at what the house is in charge of, okay? So work and daily routines. So exercise, volunteering, odd jobs, um, being of service, it also reflects your health overall, okay? Your seventh house begins the outer planets, right? That's you plus others. So the seventh house is matters of partnership. It reflects your one-on-one -on -one dynamics, how you interact with other people. So it could be romantic, it could be business relationships, it could even be like adversarial couplings. It could represent marriage. So think about Venus, which rules love and money, in the personality of Aquarius as it relates to all aspects of partnership. Mm -hmm. Um, eighth house matters, I talked about it earlier, that's all about sex and transformation. Birth, death, rebirth. So, it's the phoenix rising from the ashes. How do we learn the lessons? How do we grow from our experiences? It's um, sex, death, regeneration, as well as other people's money, because it's inheritances, and what happens after a cycle ends, what comes next? So... That's all concerns with endings and new beginnings. So you get the death card and then follow, or you get the tower and then the star. the star comes. Yeah, exactly. So then begins the healing after that. So the ninth house is all about philosophy and higher learning. So that's why when I say Sagittarius, that's like all about like higher learning. But the ninth house, philosophy, higher learning, exploration, expansion of the mind, spirituality, things that we don't understand, religion, different cultures, anthropology, philosophy, all things, um, travel, higher education, and like opportunity. What, what else is there? Tenth house matters relate to public image. So that is at the top of the chart. That's Capricorn. This is the tenth house, okay? Top of the chart. This is your midheaven up here, which are your life's goals. And then Capricorn. So, you know, this is achievement. So, highest point in the birth chart. Career trajectory. Social contributions. What is your ultimate purpose? So, if you have things happening up here, it's interesting. My son is right here. And it's also conjunct, which means like on top, two, two planets right on top of each other. So, my son on my chart is right here. And then Pluto is right on top of it. So Pluto is all about transformation, and my son is my sense of self, but it's also at the top of my chart. So that's like, it's got a lot to do with my, my work to do here on Earth. Um, so it reflects your dominant parent in life, the 10th house, your professional career, your reputation, the prestige, your standing in society, all of that. The 11th house is a little bit lighter. That's friendships. So it's community, networking, social justice, and collaboration. So it's talking about Aquarius, right? How it's like broader thinking on, on behalf of mankind. 11th house matters is community. What is your role within the community? What are your hopes and your wishes and your projects and your ambitions and your charity? So it's all about like goals and objectives and giving back and like interacting with other people. Um, and like big broad ideas for betterment of humanity. And then 12th house, that's this one before things complete. This is the 12th house. Pisces. Yep, that's Pisces. So that is all about the house of the unconscious. There's a reason why they say the Pisces is one of the psychic houses. The 8th house and the 12th house are recognized as the two houses that have the most psychic gifts. So if you have a lot of planets in the 8th house and the 12th house, you're probably psychically gifted. We have an author that's going to be coming named Carmen. She specializes in 8th and 12th house matters. She has a Facebook group um, catering to that. She has a new book that she just wrote catering to that called like Angels and Phoenixes. She's going to be talking with us in uh, September, October 
about her books. Um, she's a very gifted astrologer. But 12th house, the house of the unconscious, the house of drawn shades, that which is hidden. So, um, you know, it's all related to karma and closing out cycles before the next cycle begins. So oftentimes they say people that are Pisces, they've had many past lives and that they're like the old soul of the Zodiac. So, um, yeah. I think that that wraps up <laughs> all that I wanted to say about Venus and the houses. So are there any questions before I sign off? I am gonna sign, I am gonna save this as I usually do. So if you wanna watch it, I think we're also gonna be trying to upload everything up onto YouTube as well, in addition to Instagram. And I hope you find this valuable. We do offer readings here, and we have astrologer friends that can dive deep into your natal chart, and I hope that this is helpful. So have a wonderful remainder of your Sunday, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.